below everyone. New consciousness requires new understanding. That is the title of this episode. When we look around, when we look at life, we notice ourselves, then we notice the projection of other that we are associating with that self. So if you're listening to me, I'm different to you based on you associating with certain realities. So now when we look in, around and we see so many human beings associating with different realities and then realizing there's a ability for all these realities to infinitely change in an instant of your experience, you kind of recognize that abstraction is nothing to play with because we are seeking for the truth of all truths. And so when an absolute reality comes into your mind, it is unshaped. It is that aspect which is always unknown because you are more than just the journey. You are the intelligence that keeping is keeping all manifestation here. But how can this consciously be recognized? And in some ways it cannot. When it is said that new consciousness requires new understanding, it means that as the human species is evolving, we haven't stopped evolving. Everything, including the plane of existence, is evolving too. You begin to see <clears throat> that you are not the stepping tones which you are constantly stepping past. Realities are objects of observance, but more advanced objects which are part of the human being's self-aware communication. And sometimes this self-awareness shifts because the sense of self is kept there by you. What that means is we're all so, uh, we are all deep philosophers un, 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 until suddenly we see a comet pass by and we're all excited and we don't know what's going on. Do you see? The sense of self shifts because there is a greater understanding of the unknown. Because you are looking at how you know things, not based on how much information you've collected or what others are saying, but what you, by what you don't know, and then you go looking at that in your own way. You need to realize that the human being is objective mainly based on his communication. So that when you come in front of me, it's, it's when I tell you my name that you begin to see me more as an individualized being, you know? Terminology has given shape to many things and we are just born in this world without paying attention to it. And so there needs to be your study of life. Because new consciousness means that if things are changing in a way where we are misinterpreting, then we will not be aware of that change. What that means is think of that moment where <laughs> you're trying to find something and you suddenly find the best possible version of it. But then you begin to see that in this same moment of existence, some people are not choosing to be aware of how they are creating their vision and how the creator is within their vision. The sight of man could never be separate, but that which wanted to see took shape. So, we look at the human beings here and we recognize that there are many simultaneous realities in which aspects of one system changing are creating new modalities and versions of that system. What that means is you have been growing up and every year you've been growing up, it's as if you've just had inc more increased living potential. It seems to be that survival is not of the fittest, but it is of the quality of clarity you have in how to maneuver through this existence uh, and to recognize what this movement even is. What that means is you must ask yourself, are you willing to move beyond identity to see where an existential question leads in regards to your direct experience? Or is that yogi in the city still thinking he has a job? Transcendental concepts mean that they are absorbed through a silent aspect of your being, which is aware of it. What that means is that when you become aware to how communication is being presented in your moment of, man in your moment of being in regards to manifestation, 
you begin to see that the senses are shaping things. Every moment, it's as if that moment when the kid read in ancient Vedic literature that there was a way beyond the senses, he just went down and sat down and recognized that it wasn't that there was a way beyond senses. It was that the senses were creating the ideology which took the shape for granted. The awareness and the existential awareness that one finds within themselves is the greatest clarity because it is showing you what you are. <laughs> What that means is that if there's food on your face, you know, someone could begin telling you for eons, hey man, it's on your cheek, it's there, and you're not finding it. You know, and you're like, gosh, how do I find this food on my face? This, uh, this religious book is saying it in this manner. This scientific book is saying it in this manner. This spiritual book is saying it in this manner. This terminology is saying it in this manner. This world is saying it in this manner. My ideas are saying it in this manner. Thought is being looked at in this manner. Awareness is transparently kept. And so where is our mannerisms coming from but the silence of your being, the stillness of your being? Our truths became things that we could touch by talking about them. Truth is silent because it holds everything. Take yourself back to your knowing. Remembrance is now. Ideology is your mask. And so I just know that based on the modern man, when you go find these masks that are plastic, you can break them. They're very simple to break. I think even a child can break them. So we don't need these masks of ideology. And so the clarity come, must come from us finding the sincerity. So if you suddenly opened your eyes and realized the next morning you're a being that's here. You realize you're a human being. So what is your action to activate yourself and make yourself self-aware immediately? And that means you cannot ignore others. That means others are not responsible for your state of being. They might, your parents might have been responsible for taking physically care of you. Society must, might be responsible for acknowledging you in a certain way. But no one is responsible for your exploration of your greater states of being. It is time for man to grow up beyond man's ideology. And so in that acknowledgement, you will see that there's a gift in our illusion. That the illusion was just like that handlebar, just, just, just like that bar we are all holding on to and moving and realizing that, all right, we have strength to move on. And this strength is a transcendental strength in our new understanding. For new consciousness cannot come in if the illusion does not want to change. Because you as the creator of your moment of being are fueling that manifestation. And so the technology of fuel must turn into one where nature never had scarcity. You must realize that it is your axioms of the human construct that are making the human behavior in such a manner where it cannot see its brethren to be the same in this existence, in this reality. Become an advanced communicator. Take existential responsibility and as you do, you are giving yourself an existential allowance and awareness beyond the ideas that have come to you as your conditioning. There is no longer something as age because time is a, it, 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 is, in your, in, it is in your agreement it is manifest. So now we are looking for all agreements. The question that is written, the question that they're asking you is not on an exam paper. It is in your moment. Who are you? And there you shall see that which you are. And you will see new consciousness was never separate. It was unified in the sense that experience knew where it was. I have looked at, I have been... Directed by life many times to go into states of silence and solitude but also states of silence and solitude of conception as if whatever moment I was in the day for a minute it's as if there was there was just and just my eyes were closed and in their closing there was no manifestation I was just here but then I opened it and I had to go do whatever I had to do <laughs> but what I'm suggesting is that the human experience is growing it is natural. I see a tree growing. I see the human experience growing. I see a tree giving fruit. I see the human experience being able to communicate in multidimensional ways and also being able to land multidimensional concepts between a blend of beingness and doingness. 
So what that means, you as a being are, are, are aware that there are certain aspects of your reality which you need to exist. And there are certain aspects of your reality in which the static state shifts to a dynamic one and suddenly you see you're doing things. And so it is very important to see that they are simultaneously present. And you thought you were doing something and you were being something and you were stuck in a reality where a guru could elude you. There is no guru here, aside from your moment of awareness. There is no teaching greater than the mirror of life. Become aware of how your perception engages things. And once you do, you will orient yourself selflessly. And so personality will become a tool and a technology and all ideology and terminology will not become yours. You will not begin having ideas, but you will see you will become aware of ideas. You will see your presence is beyond it, but observant of how this creation is manifest. You do not question the creator for then you're questioning yourself. Do you see? One must see that they are choosing to have a story in which the character is perceiving <laughs> a creator and creation. But when you acknowledge things as they are, they are not so fixed to be yours. There are many moments where if you, uh, if you are in your actions throughout the day doing self-contemplation and self-awareness and very gently experiencing it, not gentle in a way where you're not active, but in a way where you are not projecting constant halls of thought to walk in. Remember, we are the human beings that are alive now. If we choose to go in our fantasies, we will not see the importance of our responsibility to our species, to our evolution. I am not working for trying to save men. I am not trying to do anything to anyone. I am trying to show you that look at your vision, see where it leads. See if this individual consciousness is not basking in a collective consciousness. See your eyes and then begin to be the most significant projection. Our educational system is not wrong in the sense that the knowledge and the ideas they're teaching, it's the environment in which the human being is in a sense being introduced to that are suggesting how he will receive his next environment. So what that means is if I, tr if someone, if you be a person just like the Buddha, let's say, that you never left, lived as a prince, you never lived outside of your kingdom until suddenly you were in your teens or something. Do you know you haven't left your, your, your castle until then? You see that there is a huge significance because Plato's allegory, allegory of your cave was a reason that man wrote that article. There is an importance to understand that if you do or not become aware of where you are, you might not get off your seat. You might be in the wrong bus stop and someone's like, yo bro, where are you going? And you're like, I don't know man, I'm just here, I'm just sitting in this bus stop, what are you doing? I just want to sit here, look how comfortable the bus, the chair is and these other guys know that this is the right bus stop. And you see, when someone knows you're not in the right bus stop but wants to help you, sees that he can't say it, he says, hey man, I don't know where the right bus stop is, but you check for yourself. Are you at the right bus stop? Double check your environment and you might begin to say, okay, there's nothing wrong with double checking because I'm doing it. He's not doing it. It's my, my reality. And so you see that when you go and self-observe self yourself, you suddenly see, whoa, this is not even a bus stop. I'm just standing in somewhere, you know? The significance of your reality is the ability of your vision to see yourself be expressed in that projection. What that means, if, if I cannot see myself waking up in the morning, there will be no talk. <laughs> And so there is, there is an inspiration that is not just uh, law, uh, that is not just accessible to a few. See, there's also certain things about higher consciousness and new consciousness that people are not allowing themselves to see because they're trying to understand it based on what they've seen. To have a very empty moment in observing something gives you, gives the allowance of that life 
to manifest in a certain way. When you allow someone, for example, to do something, when you do something for someone that is kind and compassionate, as the Dalai Lama suggests, you begin to see that you internally are getting a greater vision by doing an act. You see, man, as a human being, he only has two things he can do. He can sit still or he can move. And same with his communication. He cannot communicate or he can communicate. And so based on your awareness to these uh, linear layerings that are not linearly kept. So what that means is regardless of how many of my talks you hear, it is all poetry because there's more to the intelligence of man in regards to its non-linear aspects of receiving this world. Do you recognize that new understanding sometimes means nothing? And then something is received. And you know, it's, it's, it's a very significant moment because human consciousness is, is, is like that moment where it's saying, okay, we're multidimensional, we are an experience beyond our linearity, but gosh, we've been associating with the linearity and what do we do? You know what you do? Let Mr. Within guide you here. What you do is you create new renaissances and bring in imagery that has not been seen before. You go within the core of your being and whether you are a poet or not, you begin finding certain words that combine and they unlock frequencies within you, which you suddenly write down and you will see that you have written a book in what was an instant of unknown experience, but an omniscient one. We are a multidimensional being and the new renaissance will be the existential allowance of talking about these in linearity. We thought the ego had to break. In other words, linear language could not be fully utilized because it was limiting, but we are seeing our limitation has been keeping us alive. Our limitation has been keeping us limitless and so be grateful. Look at the divinity around you in regards to how your moment is kept in the manifestation of existence. For existential compassion was beyond the hierarchy. It was beyond the mistake of Eden. It was beyond the apple of Newton. So far as we have seen, we shall continue to see. But you must engage your life intelligence. And let this be a very sincere communication from a human being who's aware of his being. Learn from your life, not as a your, not as a you, but as the presence within this universe. And see that there is no limitation, there is no boundary, there is no need to agree that there is disagreement. Agree that there was agreement before the disagreement. See that this life is kept by a love that does not give you a face but shows you how it's done. It shows you how you're looking. Every bird, everything, every object, every conception. You begin to get existential laughters where you're sitting and you begin to suddenly see that your axioms of what you were as an identity, as a self change. You begin to see just like trees fall. You were never the same. New consciousness meant new moments where things broke and a man spoke seriously to see that playfulness was the door. Love this life and you will love the communication. You will see that in reality, to be honest, you must energize yourself not with, in a sense, consuming things, but creating things and feeding things. The minute, uh, when I was young, the flows that were coming to me were not really healthy. And what I mean by that is I was not a good kid. Even though I, I, I accepted the ideas, I was very polite. I did, it's as if my intentions were not nice because I was not seeing a nice world. And so whoever I went around, I noticed they would realize this. As if my presence was in some mist that only the people would just look back and they'd be like, wow, do you know? And this is of course not, this is me being poetic because in a sense, nobody knew the suffering that only I could see. But I recognize that the reason it was not because I was not, in a sense, in a very cliche manner, being myself, because I was thinking 
that to survive in this world, I had to be something, and that something was an idea which would get more ex advanced by my achievements. And so I was constantly doing some kind of plan of action. And I noticed that life slapped me a couple of times in my arrogance. And I could not see it and I was like, oh gosh, life is tough. But when life slaps you in the face, it is there to break that face and to show you who you can be. And so you will see those people who are open to concepts of taking their life must first take the life of the ideas that are suggesting suicide. It is the idea that is depressing. The you are giving the ideology in which you are associating with thorns. But you must know that it can also be a rose. An advanced mind does not create barriers in which it knows that it will hinder itself. Once you know that you're responsible for this life, you go handle the barriers by the way the barrier wants to handle itself. What that means is in many business realities, we see that how you handle the client is not by you having an agenda, but by you seeing what the client really wants. And when the client's communication is clearly received in perhaps an empty moment, as empty as a Zen master tea ceremony, you begin to see that the needs are also projected by the problem. The minute a person told you the problem, they had also created the answer for it. But you see that it is all about existential confrontation and the fear that is in front of you, which needs to be handled with more direct experience. New renaissances will develop and so this will happen and it has happened and you will see it will be a natural allowance. Don't be surprised if you're thinking less and things are happening more for you. Don't be surprised that you are more happier and willing to accept the experiences that are your, the, the next moments that are coming to you uh, more joyfully and seeing that your life is becoming abundant. Many people get lost and trapped in this modality of thinking that there needs to be a very serious discipline in life and this discipline has no time to be uh, joyful because it has to go through the tough pain of working hard. True, that is a way of navigating through this existential intelligence, through ideology, but also recognize that there's a modality where you are observantly and mindfully taking your steps. What that means is in this battle, some people are running to as if the war has begun and you are suddenly a soldier in this life. And as you are a soldier in this life to fight and in a sense cultivate more the harmonious flows that are projecting more ability in our culture and reality. You begin to see that as the war begins and you as a soldier are holding your sword in your hand, some soldiers are running like crazy to attack the other army and some soldiers are walking gently to then observe the playground and then fight in a different piece. I would like to share a kind of um, experience I had on my subtler planes of abstraction and what I mean by that is that uh, I was doing some uh, yard work actually <laughs> and simultaneously while I, I have this rake in my hand it's as if the image of the rake in my hand is bringing back memories of how that ra same rake can exist in another way. So in other words, I am, you could call it a thought experience if you're too technical, or you can call it an actualization where you're gaining experience from a projection within your subtler planes, as, as Mr. Within likes to call. Uh, I began to see that this rake in my hand gave me a feeling and suddenly in my thought I just saw this projection as if I was standing in front of this temp not temple but in front of this building and I have this stick and I remember the state of being and this is not this is just an abstraction guys and I was just standing there and as I was standing there I could feel the rake in my hand get firm as if like while I was just uh, doing this yard work outside for a second the rake in my arm in my arm began to be gripped like the way I was seeing it in that projection in my subtle realms. And so in that subtle realm, suddenly it's like all my attention. I was I was aware where I was standing in the yard, but I just stopped moving and my eyes just closed. And simultaneously I was just aware how suddenly I was in that experience. And I was in this experience of being in, I, I could not see the face, I could not see my body, but I was aware of the activity in the sense that I was standing and I had this stick in my hand. 
some kind of stick that was like, um, how would I say? Just the, not longer than the rake actually. And it wasn't sharp, it was just a stick. Uh, and this stick was held and I was standing there. It, it, it felt as if I was guarding some kind of housing area, whether it was for children or something, I don't know. But I was standing there and I see in that moment, I just remember that I'm standing there, I'm holding this, this stick, and as I'm holding the stick, my eyes are closed, but I'm knowing what's coming towards me. It's that moment where you feel something's coming from you, from the woods in front of you, and suddenly you see it's a bear. So similarly, I was just standing there with a stick, and I suddenly see, and it's, I think it's, in my projection, it is 12 personalities. It is 12 figures that are charging, and it's as if it's a war scenario. So I am this guy with a stick, and there are just these people fighting, right? And I simply remember that the rake in my hand becomes very firm, as if like in one re physical reality, I'm just standing still, my eyes are closed and I'm just holding the rake more firmly. On a subtler level, I am present there in that reality and I begin to see the stick begins to move in a way where the moment is doing the hit. So I see it's as if I'm a being at that moment where I'm fight not fighting, but I'm handling externality as my momentary intelligence, but those people fighting with me are still fighting as bodies. And so, as the intelligence of the moment, all my actions and the stick is moving itself. The body, the physical body is moving itself. And I just see that in that moment, it's as if I'm just, it's very playful, as if I'm just an observant. It's as if I'm the experiencer, um, I do not want to use the word soul, but I want to say it's as if the consciousness was aware of the manifestation, and so the manifestation handled. As if my allowance, and it was as if very playfully, I got rid of all these beings in that moment. It was very quick, and I just saw that afterwards I was praying and guiding them. It was very crazy. It was a very crazy imaginary situation that just happened in my mind while doing gardening. And I just saw that it's as if after I had, I had the physical manifestation of those beings had ended, their subtler manifestation was still being handled by my moment. And my moment was being, was guiding. It was a very monkey's <laughs> And it's, it's crazy because we are enemies in thought. Outside of thought, we are beings of great experience. And so we are always guiding one another home, transcendentally, through our collisions and through many of our collaborations. New consciousness requires new understanding, and that means a new understanding of the self of selves. You begin to observe that you are an observer in which personality and ideology and terminology and everything that is of a dualistic nature is being observed in a unified manner. The yin-yang was a hologram. You did not see it. It is not just the one circle is encompassing it. It is that simultaneous realities are, are keeping coexistence real for the eyes of man in the sense that the eyes of man was an intelligence that was not limited by imagery. The clarity that is within you is more than the starlight that is journeying through uh, what is the... Uh, what is the... <sighs> dawn to come. Remember yourself and you shall see the inspiration of your being is the new renaissance that requires to happen. And remember, the mystic knows that when we are going to the unknown, we are going with the love of everything we know. We look at everything we know and with that love we go into the unknown. When you get ready to see yourself, you shall see yourself. Let your vision carry you, and through your trust of life, you shall see you have been carrying all vision. Much blessings and namaste.